Hello Moodlings, my name is Dr. Nicole Lunan and I'm the CEO and co-founder of MoodMe, a new app that allows you to share over 400 and plus moods, emotions, and desires with your lover, thus making communication simple, fun, and super easy. When it comes to relationships, we often hear about the importance of certain habits such as communication, trust, and mutual respect. However, there are some habits that may seem bad or counterintuitive, but are actually quite beneficial for a relationship. For example, spending time apart, having disagreements, and even acknowledging your attraction to others can all promote a strong connection between partners when handled in a healthy way. In this way, it's important to recognize that not all relationship habits are created equal, and some seemingly negative habits can actually be positive in the right context. By understanding and practicing these habits, couples can cultivate a new, satisfying relationship. So, here are seven relationship habits that are counterintuitive. Number one, spending time apart. Spending time apart can feel counterintuitive to a relationship. It can feel scary or bad when your partner wants some alone time, but guess what? Spending time apart is a healthy relationship habit that allows each partner to maintain their individuality and interests while also preventing codependency and fostering a source of independence in the relationship. It's important for both partners to have time to pursue their own hobbies, friendships, and personal goals as it can provide a sense of fulfillment and prevent resentment from building up. Time apart can also create an opportunity for both partners to miss each other, leading to a stronger sense of affection and appreciation when they come back together. While it's important to spend quality time together as a couple, too much togetherness can also be detrimental to a relationship. Spending time apart can allow each partner to recharge and come back to the relationship with renewed energy and enthusiasm. However, it's important to strike a healthy balance of time to depart and time spent together in order to maintain a strong connection and intimacy within the relationship. If you spend too much time together as a couple and you don't focus on some of your personal interests, you don't focus on you know, cultivating friendships or still doing the hobbies that you love, you can become resentful of each other quite quickly. It's like this person's always in your space. Um, you don't get any space to process things by yourself. And if you can process things with your partner, that's great. But some people, they need to process things on their own. So space also allows you to want them sexually again, you know, put some space in between. All of a sudden you're like, I miss the cuddles. I miss the hugs. I miss the kisses. I miss the affection. So space is sexy to relationships, although it can be quite counterintuitive. Number two, agreeing to disagree. Agreeing to disagreeing can feel negative, especially in the moment, because it feels good to our ego to agree with another person for them to agree with us. Reality is two people aren't going to agree on absolutely everything. So learning how to disagree is a positive relationship habit. Agreeing to disagree is a healthy relationship habit that can help couples navigate disagreements and conflicts without causing long-term damage to the relationship. It involves acknowledging that both partners have differing opinions or perspectives on a particular issue and that it may not be possible to find a resolution that satisfies both parties. Instead of trying to convince the other person to see things from your point of view, both partners can agree to respect each other's opinion and move forwards without letting the disagreement affect the entire relationship. This habit can promote healthy communication, mutual respect, and prevent unnecessary arguments or tension. It's important to note that agreeing to disagree should not be used as a way to avoid issues or to sweep them under the rug, rather a way to recognize the differences and understand that they're a natural part of the relationship. And sometimes the best way to move forward is to simply accept and respect each other's opinions. Remember, it's not that you disagree, it's how you communicate your disagreement. Were you able to disagree while also allowing your partner to feel heard and acknowledged? Learning to disagree with your partner is huge in relationships and specifically in the power struggle phase when you realize that, oh my goodness, my partner is not exactly the same as me. Wow, that's weird. My partner has a different perspective and a different life and different opinions on things. And they might not agree with me. Does that mean they're a bad person? No. Does that mean we should disrespect their opinion? Absolutely not. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion, no matter if you agree with it or not. So the most important thing is to learn how to give people space 
to speak their mind, speak their truth, and then to not judge them or put them down for it, but uplift them and honor the differences. So disagreeing with your partner can seem counterintuitive, but learning how to do it in a healthy, respectful way is absolutely a healthy communication habit. This is going to cut your arguments in half. Number three, acknowledging attraction to other people. When we're in relationships, especially long-term relationships, it's natural to feel attracted to others. When we stuff that feeling down and make ourselves feel bad about it, that's where we get into trouble. It becomes the shameful secret that just grows in the shadows. Acknowledging attraction to others can be a healthy communication habit as long as it's done with healthy communication and respect. It's natural for other humans to find other humans attractive and acknowledging this can help it prevent it to become like a secret or something that you're shameful or just extra underlying tension in the relationship. When partners are open and honest about their attraction to others, it can build trust and strengthen the communication between them. Additionally, expressing attraction to others can help each partner feel more secure in the relationship as it shows that they trust each other enough to be honest about how they actually feel. However, it's important to remember that there's a difference between acknowledging attraction and acting on it. While it's okay to find other people attractive, it's not okay to act on these feelings in a way that would violate the trust or boundaries in the relationship. By being open and honest about their attraction to others, partners can create a safe space to discuss their feelings and prevent them from becoming a source of distrust and tension within the relationship. Something strange happens in relationships where we deny that we have attraction to other people. We might shut that door, but if you're in a really long-term relationship, uh, attraction to another person is going to happen at some point. So it's up to you and your partner if you feel safe enough to discuss these types of things with each other, or if it's something that you, know, you accept that your partner probably has for another person or other people, but won't act on it, so it's totally okay. I think the difference is, is if you, you trust your partner to have that attraction, but to not step over any of the boundaries that were set that would actually hurt you and vice versa. I often wonder if we don't wanna hear about our partners being attracted to another person because we don't feel that security or that sense of stability. So it's almost like a fear that, oh no, this person is attracted to another person. And then you're afraid that they're gonna step over that boundary or they might leave the relationship. However, if you have a strong relationship and you have that sense of stability and foundation, um, then it could feel safe to tell your partner that, hey, you find that person to be quite beautiful or that person was interesting and tell them why you thought they were interesting because you know that that relationship is so solid that neither one of you were actually going to go anywhere. Number four, being willing to end the relationship. Being willing to end the relationship may seem like a counterintuitive relationship habit, but it can actually be a healthy one if both partners are honest and realistic about their needs and expectations. The willingness to end a relationship can prevent the couple from staying in a toxic and unfulfilling situation and can encourage each partner to communicate openly and create a solution that benefits both parties. When both partners understand that the relationship is not guaranteed to last forever, it can motivate them to prioritize the present moment and work towards a happy and healthy relationship in the present. Additionally, the willingness to end a relationship can prevent codependency and attachment issues from developing because both partners are aware that they have the, the power to take over their own choices and their own happiness. However, it's important to remember that the willingness to end a relationship should not be used as a way to manipulate or control the other person. It's important to approach the topic with empathy and respect and to work towards a solution that benefits both partners, whether that means staying together or going their separate ways. Who here plays relationship chicken? Relationship chicken is when both people kind of know they should end the relationship, but nobody wants to end the relationship. And you know, it can lead to a lot of toxic situations like staying in a relationship that both parties know is not working, but they're afraid to be alone or they don't want to go through the discomfort of breaking up. So actually having the willingness to end a relationship in a really mature way is a healthy, communication habit. Number five, accepting your partner's flaws. Especially to perfectionists and fixers, accepting your partner's flaws can feel counterintuitive. You may want to try and change or improve your partner, and that would be the opposite of accepting your partner's flaws. 
Accepting your partner's flaws is a healthy communication habit that can promote unconditional love and acceptance. Nobody's perfect, and it's natural for partners to have different habits, quirks, personality traits that may be frustrating or challenging at times. By accepting each other's flaws and imperfections, partners can create a safe and supportive space where they can be their true self without fear of judgment or rejection. However, it's important to note that accepting each other's flaws doesn't mean tolerating abusive or disrespectful behavior. It's important to set clear boundaries and communicate your needs in a respectful and assertive manner while still maintaining a sense of compassion and empathy towards your partner. Number six, being willing to hurt your partner's feelings. Being willing to hurt your partner's feelings may seem like a toxic relationship habit, but it can actually be a healthy one with, done with good intentions in a respectful manner. There may be times where a partner needs to have a difficult conversation and express their true feelings, even if it may cause temporary discomfort or hurt. It's important to approach these situations with empathy and care and to avoid using hurtful language or personal attacks. Being honest and willing to have difficult conversations can ultimately strengthen the trust and communication in a relationship as long as it's done in a constructive and respectful way. Additionally, avoiding confrontation or withholding important information can do more damage in the long run. So being willing to have these hard conversations can ultimately be a positive habit and a healthy relationship. We can't go through our relationships not willing to hurt the other person's feelings. That would mean that we are people pleasing. We're trying to please the other person and that which way we're being dishonest about our own feelings, our own emotions, our own things that we don't like. And the other person can can actually feel that. So you could be nice to the other person, meanwhile having this kind of passive aggressive undertone about something you didn't like. Of course they can feel that. And it makes them confused about your behavior and your words because your energy and your words aren't matching up. So we have to be strong and have courage and be willing to say some things that, hey, may not feel good for your partner to hear, but you cannot go through your entire relationship only wanting to make your partner feel good because you will then sacrifice your sense of self. So yes, it's a healthy relationship habit to be willing to say things that might hurt your partner's feelings, if that will leverage your relationship in the long run. And lastly, number seven, prioritizing personal interests. Prioritizing personal interests can sometimes feel counterintuitive to nurturing and growing the relationship. Sometimes we pour all of our energy into the relationship and we abandon our personal interests. However, prioritizing personal interests is a healthy relationship habit that can promote personal growth, fulfillment, and prevent codependency in the relationship. It's important for partners to have their own hobbies, passions, goals outside of the relationship as it can prevent them from losing their sense of identity and independence. When partners prioritize their personal interests, it can create a sense of excitement, positivity within the relationship as each partner has something new to bring to the table and new stories to share with each other. Don't give up on the things that you love because you fell in love with somebody else. I'll repeat that. Don't give up on the things that you love because you fell in love with somebody else. You should always maintain your sense of self and one of the biggest ways to do that is to always make space and room for your personal interests, your personal hobbies, your personal friends. Your partner fell for you when you were in your independence, right? So maintain that independence. Bring in something new to the table. If you do everything together, what newness are you gonna have to bring to the table? You have to go out and experience the world on your own a little bit so that you can grow and you can give your partner space to grow. And when you come back at the dinner table, you have something fun and exciting to talk about. All right, all right, that marks the end of our video. If you like our video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And see you later, moodlings.